So um, I make weird noises with my mouth. For some reason, you guys like that. I, for one, do certainly enjoy it. But let me tell you something. I did not come out of the womb like Five years ago, my beatboxing journey started with a bet. So my best friend at the time, Elaine and I, were watching YouTube videos in class. And we stumbled upon this video of a guy dancing to a dubstep remix of the song Pumped Up Kicks. And he was just screwing physics. And we were just blown away. And then the related videos column on the right side forced us to watch another video. And the second video was of a Chinese beatboxer. And he did something he called six sounds. He layered six different sounds on top of each other, using only his mouth and his voice. And after watching those two videos, Elena and I kind of just sat there in awe for a while. And then she said, man, I wish I could do that. And I was like, yeah, me too. And then she was like, too bad we're not talented enough. And I was like, we? speak for yourself. I bet I could do that with some practice. And she was like, yeah, right. If you can do that, I'll learn how to do the dance. And so we made a bet. If I can learn the six sounds, Elaine will learn to dance. I never planned on being a beatboxer. As a seventh grader, I wasn't thinking about finding my passion. I didn't even know what passion meant. Yet as a high schooler, all you seem to hear is, find your passion, talk about your passion, as if we're supposed to pinpoint a single thing we know we want the rest of our lives to revolve around. That's a lot of pressure. And I would argue that's way too much pressure. You know, that's like getting a tattoo, which then they would say, oh, you're going to regret that. You don't know you want that with you for the rest of your life? <laughs> but you know, they're right. Passion is a feeling, and feelings change. So don't let this cultural imperative to find your passion really get to you too much. If you feel pressured to do it, you're not doing it right. But it's still important to be aware of when you have these sparks of emotion that are telling you, hey, I feel good about what, I do, what I'm doing right now. You know, without praise or recognition from the outside. Because, let's be real, school is great, but a few letters in the grade book should not and will not satisfy you. There has to be something more. And the only way to do those things is by being yourself, letting you do you. I mean, I did it through a silly bet. And I took that bet because that's just the type of person I am. I go around to my friends asking, hey, you want a bet? You want a bet? How much you want a bet? I can make it from here to the trash can. Five kwai, 10 kwai. And you know, I like playing poker too. But that doesn't mean my passion is gambling. I think it shows my playfulness and my willingness to take risks. You know, sometimes I make it in, and most of the times, I do not. You know, I'm a little bit cocky, a little bit cautious. I think that's me. I'm stubborn, too. You know, I didn't just make the bet. I had to win the bet. And learning how to make six sounds at the same time was hard. First, I had to master the sounds themselves. And practicing the kick was literally just spitting on everything and everyone around me, <laughs> really. And you know, the people around me, they told me to stop. Because as one guy put it, it sounded like I was farting through my mouth and I was embarrassing him. And so I would beatbox when I, when I was alone, which I quite often was during my early beatboxing days. And I remember practicing the rim shot, which is an inward sound that requires inhaling. And I would inhale so sharply and so suddenly, I ended up choking on my own spit <laughs> on multiple occasions. My mother was getting quite concerned. But that wasn't the most frustrating part. I probably played the video back 200 times, at least, trying to figure out how to get the rhythm right and put the beats together. I would play the video back in half speed to try to write, to try to write out the beats. And it would sound something like <laughs> And I would remember thinking, yeah, I got this, no problem, Boots and Cats. And then I played in full speed. And it sounded like Hold up, I did not sign up for this. Well, I did. But I just remember feeling 
absolutely devastated the first time I listened to the video back in full speed. But I stuck to it. Not because it was my passion, but because I'm stubborn. I like to be impressive. And I really wanted to see the dorkiest girl I know dance to dubstep. <laughs> and then I developed my passion for beatboxing naturally. Not forcefully, forcefully by sticking the label my passion on it and waiting for some magic to happen and for me to move on to bigger and better things. No. Who would have thought what once sounded like farts <laughs> would eventually sound like a snare on a drum? <laughs> no one around me. And if I didn't believe it, I would have stopped trying. But I did. And I wouldn't let the words of others stop me from getting what I want which was to win that bet, which by the way, Lynn, you never followed up on. <laughs> I didn't think it would land me here. I never would have thought I'd have the honor of performing alongside Newbury Medal winning author Kwame Alexander and a white guy playing the pipa. Shout out to Wakum Penny. <laughs> and just thinking of within our school community, I get to teach and maybe even inspire and I'm performing with what I think are the most talented people here. I mean, have you heard Michelle Law sing? Or have you seen Chelsea Hong dance? Or Matthew Tung play the violin? I mean, he stomps when he plays. And to be considered a talent standing next to them, I can't wrap my head around it. And it all started with me being typical me, taking on an absurd bet, but embracing my choice by following through. So you remember that six sound thing I was talking about? Well, now I'm at eight. Do you guys want to hear it? work in progress. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I'm not saying that every time you make a rash decision, it will always be better than listening to the advice of others. I'm saying don't let them govern who you are. That's a responsibility you have to take on for yourself. And frankly, I don't think I'd be here for anything else but beatboxing. And so I think the rewards are well worth the risks. To all my peers sitting in the crowd, when someone asks you, what do you do? Don't say, oh, I'm a student. I don't do anything yet. Each and every one of you is so much more than a student. Whether you are a writer like Ryan, a photographer like Nicole, a rapper like Ray, Dancer, Chelsea, artist, Ming Lee, athlete, Candace, actress, Amisha, Coda, Brandon, or beatboxer, Chan Wu. <laughs> as long as what, you, what you're doing makes you feel good, and it's not illegal, then do it and stick to it. Maybe you'll find something better, then stick to that. Don't try to be the next Steve Jobs. I hate it when people say that. Steve Jobs was a legend, yes, rest in peace. But you can't be the next Steve Jobs, because Steve Jobs has his own story, and you have yours. Embrace what makes you unique. The little things and the big things. You know you have something that no one else does. The beautiful mix of your story and your character. Embrace it. Because it is what will get you through the good times and the others. 
have the courage to do you. Have the courage to be you. Thank you.